What's going on, everybody? My name is Dallas. You're listening to Vic Food Stories, and this is the podcast where we talk about food in and around Victoria, British Columbia. And in today's case, I'm at this new place that's changed my understanding of what tea is. So this is Flourish Bew Tea, right? Right. Yeah. How you guys doing? Good. How are you? Doing very well. We're doing great. So I came in here on Sunday with Natalie. And yeah, I had my understanding of tea just totally changed as to what it could be. Because what you're doing here, I, I would, I've never had anything like it. Like I had three different um, tea beverages and right. they were all radically different. Uh -huh. So for anyone that hasn't been here, how would you describe what you're doing here to them? So basically we are doing very newly tea in this industry so usually the people think about the tea is kind of the bubble tea or the very traditional black tea right so for example the english black tea or english breakfast yeah. in here we are trying to do something very refreshing very stunning tea for example our signature product is the forest carbonation fruit tea so it's basically it's the fast food brand with the tea and some carbonation you will give you some refreshing feeling because usually you go to any coffee shop, you just very straightforward, the tea itself favored, right? So we trying to make that difference because we found out. So in Vancouver or in BC, we've traveled a lot. So we found out those tea is just very brand favored, doesn't have any stunning flavor, it's just straightforward. So right now we try to do something kind of changing the world because in China or the in Asia, in Asian, Korea, Japan, they have a very long history for the tea. Whereas in here, it's just kind of the Western tea industry, Western tea uh, history. We try to do something different. This is why we bring the forest beauty in here. And so in Asia, is this what you're doing here? Is this pretty all over Asia? Uh, it's not all over Asia because we try to combine the different cultures. For example, Black tea, usually in here is just black tea, but we don't have any black tea here. We have the green tea in here, but green tea is such as the Japanese green tea, matcha tea. We have the matcha tea here, but... Mm, so you guys have no black tea? No black tea. Oh, I didn't because, realize that. No. No. Because there's too much caffeine uh, onto our tea. Yeah. And then as I said, uh, mentioned that we do a lot of business touring, especially we go to Vancouver a lot. It's not just for fooding, it's also for uh, exploring for their business and see how it's different because some of the places, they're just selling the tea bag itself. It doesn't have the taste inside. It doesn't have any flavor. It just can taste, oh, that's tea. And then more likely it's tea branded with the water together. But in here, you actually can taste a different kind of the flavor inside of the tea itself. And then also it comes with a really natural ingredient. And then for our branding, everything's trying to like less, uh, less written, less caffeine. It's just giving like, uh, another few options for people who is carrying their house and life. Yeah, I mean, like, so all of those dishes or all the the tea story that we had, and we had one coffee. Mm -hmm. Right. Again, they they all did taste very different from each other, mm -hmm. and they had like fresh pieces of fruit mm -hmm. in right. each one. Um, mostly they have the fresh fruit because usually you drink tea, you just tea. We kind of doing some renovated on our tea is food tea, but it's not the bubble tea industry food tea because we want want to bring something fresh for the pe to the people. This is why we have the food tea in here. And so this you sort of mentioned this is sort of a fusion of different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you have come up with? Uh yes. So basically, I can tell those ideas come up from me. <laughs> Really? Um, I am the product manager in here. Mm -hmm. I so probably you never seen this product in the market because it never appear in the market. So this is why we are here. We are the first creator for this product. Well, right. I got to give props to you because again, you you reframed what tea is to me now. Mm -hmm. Right. Like yeah. there was one in particular that hibiscus um Cargate. Yeah. The what is it? <laughs> Hibiscus Cargate. Cargate. Yeah. Yeah. And it, so that's a flower tea. Yes. Right. And that, that tea, I want to say, I think it might be my favorite tea I've ever had in my life. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That one in particular, and that one you can get hot or cold, right? Right. Yes. So I, I had it hot. 
and it it was insane how good it was. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that that's that's you coming up with that. Yes, it is because here. So we try to make all the product very refreshing. So we are using very high quality tea leaf and the tea and the flower to make the different tea in here. For example, the hibiscus. We are using the actually the hibiscus to fresh brew for for the customer for the people they want to drink it. It takes a little bit longer than usual. It's not pre-made. We had to uh, fresh food when the people order. This is why when you drink it, it's very fresh, very stunning because everything is very fresh in here. So you're making everything after someone orders it. Yeah, it is. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Isaac come up a lot of great ideas on the drinks, and I'm the one to looking for the picture. Oh, Isaac, I like this one. Can you make this one for me? And at the first beginning, he might just try to do oh. Yeah, I can try to make it for you. And then later on, I feel, oh, the taste is so great. And then the color looks so great. Maybe you should try to make more. Then it's come up with the idea that he just doing all his own. And then he got his own recipe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um, even though we go out to try some of the tea and some of the beverage outside, and then we take that recipe and then we do some innovative on the drinks as well. So we don't complete to take the same as people's doing outside, but we're doing some difference into our tea. Yeah. So you get inspirations from elsewhere and then you put your own flavor onto it. Right. Yes. It yes. Is. And so- then he can see, uh, he watch a lot of video uh, to see, oh, how to learn to make the tea, how to learn to make the coffee. Because honest, at the first beginning, we don't know how to make tea. We don't know how to make coffee. We don't know how to make the desserts. We don't know anything about it. So question. Right. When you didn't know how to do any of this, how long ago was that? It's quite a long time. So at the beginning, when I have the idea to start a business, it's kind of a few years ago. Almost two and a half years. Two and a half years ago. At that time, we both have a full-time job in the different industry. So basically, we're working full-time during the day and the weekend or the evening. We try to do something different. We went to Vancouver or went to somewhere out to try something very new in the market and try to get some ideas, get the inspiration from those products and get the advantage why it's so stunning for the people and then also take their disadvantages to see why it's something not as good as other competitor. So this is why we comes up a lot of idea, a lot of business touring to see the different restaurant, cafe, or such a, even though the bubble tea shop, because you know, the bubble tea shop is so popular in Vancouver. It's, we need to take a look why it's so popular. We right. need to get that idea why it's so popular. This is why we comes up something, all the different things in here. It's brand new idea, but it's just not traditional. So why do you think the bubble tea is so popular? Because there are a lot of bubble tea shop in Vancouver, this is why we are thinking it's so popular in Vancouver. Is yeah. it just just because there's so many of them? I think so. Probably this comes comes up come to my mind. Okay. Right. I love bubble tea, honest, and then uh, but I couldn't drink too much because uh, it's too much sweeter on my body. And then when I uh become older and older, and then I really care about of my body. And then uh, the inspiration is from me. And then the actual product is from him. So we compromising together for the idea. So he couldn't do it on his own. I couldn't do it on my own as well. Yeah. So you guys are like the ultimate team. Right. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and I, I do want to say too that, yeah, nothing was overly sweet at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it walked the line of just being like, you, you got the sweetness, but it was like pleasurable. Like you didn't need more than you got here. No. And when we walked away, because we, we Natalie, and, Natalie and I shared like three different drinks. Right. We walked away feeling great. Nice. Like I didn't get any type of caffeine crash or anything like that afterwards or sugar crash or anything. Right. It, it was just like super refreshing flavor. I, I don't know. We walked out with a huge smile and I kept like, I just couldn't <laughs> shut up about this place for the next couple of days. That's good to know. Yeah. Good to hear. So because one of the reasons we don't buy any us outside of the market because some silver they have the food edited so basically all the silver we do in here we are using it's with- the homemade syrup so you're making all the syrup yourself right yeah so he, he is the one to making all the stuff in here so you're like a mad scientist with tea <laughs> kind of kind of why now 
Um, and so you guys first originally started at Mayfair Mall. Yes. Yes. Was that was that last winter? Uh, last uh, Christmas. Yeah, and then yeah. we find out that oh, maybe we should do something to start uh slowly with the business, even though we don't know how our tea looks like to the people, right? So we just want to take a little bit uh of the opportunity to see, and then we got the space in the Mayfair Mall and starting to let people to try out, and then they just feel oh, so great. Yeah, and then finally, uh, we finish uh the pop up shop at there, and we just keep looking for the location, and then now we got the physical location. Our all loyalty customers just always come back to visit us. So you were you've been since you were at that shop and it closed down. You were looking for a location. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So how did you find how did you find this one? How did it come to be? Uh, you mean in the this location? Well, yeah, this on Fourth Street here. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, we at that time we have a realtor. Right. Yeah. And then just try to look at the different location in the market. We have been looking at the location for a very, very long time. But this one, you just suddenly come up to the market, and then we found out that is the perfect location for it. And then we are here right now. Right. And so the idea for this, for doing this, mm -hmm. did that start like two and a half years ago? Uh, two and a half years ago. Was like the first inkling that maybe you guys want to do something like this? No, actually, at the first beginning, the idea is just simple. We just want to open up like a shop, maybe just selling some drinks in here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after time to time, and then we've done a lot of researching. And then uh, especially uh, the people, they are more caring of their body. They're more caring their health life. Then we are starting to change with our product recipe. How many cups of tea did you drink in your research? Oh, no. Don't tell me that. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's yeah. a lot. I can just give you an example. When I was in Vancouver for the two, uh, business tours, we don't eat. We didn't eat anything because we are so full. Basically, that day, we just went to six or seven different places and tried a different drink, at least 12 drinks for a day. Right. And then normally, we just buy a small cup and then we share it and it has a little bit bite and then that's it because it's just too much for us. We couldn't finish the whole one. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned to me when I was in here the other day, you didn't first come to Victoria when you came to Canada, right? No, we. For me, the first, uh, the first location that I landed was Vancouver. Okay. But, and then I moved to Saskatchewan, and then for my university, and then moved to here with Anna. Right. So. What brought you to Victoria specifically? Why did you choose Victoria to sort of be the place where you were going <laughs> to... Yeah, my first destination was in Toronto. Yeah. And then I got a bunch of family in there. And then uh, after I graduated from the university, I just moved to Saskatchewan for um, a job for a couple of years. And then I met Isaac in there. <laughs> oh, so you guys met in Saskatchewan? Yeah. yeah so taste. we've been in Saskatchewan for three years, right? Three years, four years. Yeah, almost three four and a year. half years already. And uh, it was so cool in there. And then after that, I just uh, want to go back to school. I decided to go back to school and then I find um, Victoria then can transfer my credit. So mm. that's why we moved to Victoria. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you just decided you didn't want to leave? Uh, yes. yes Victoria so. is a really great place. And then we, we really enjoy it here. So that's why we just want to stay and expand the life in here. I agree with you. I love Victoria. Right. Mm, yeah. it's a, I mean, I was lucky enough to be born here. Right. But I, I try not to take it for granted because to me, it's a very special no. place. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing like, like people like you coming here and then like getting um, super pumped. And opening up a business now, doing something that no one else is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, I just, I was so happy when I left here, meeting you two and, and to seeing who, how you operate, who you are and what you're doing here. And you mentioned to me, Isaac, that you traveled back to Asia to learn how to make some of this stuff. Yes, I did. Because as Anna said, I didn't know anything. I didn't know how to make tea, how to make coffee. I traveled back to Asia and tried to go to some classes and learn how to make those tea and the coffee because we didn't know anything. It's very challenging for us if we want to do some business. We need to go to some class that is very professional, right? This is, is the first step. I went to those cars and then second set, I went to some bubble tea. I didn't tell you that. I went to some bubble tea shop just doing the part-time job. It was so challenging for me because in Asian, the what 
your atmosphere is a little bit different from here. It's so fast, fast so piece, fast yes. pieces, right? So uh, there, would they would they be doing the made to order stuff like you are here? It's different. It's more challenging than here because the people is kind of ten types of people customer in than in Canada. So okay. it's very you need to do it very fast, very correctly, and then it's challenging. So when you start the work, you don't have time to take break at mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. because it's just so busy everywhere in Asia, right? Yeah. So in that time, he was working so hard, and then he learned it. He actually take that uh into himself. It's not just he go for work. He just want to learn something that he can just spill up uh his recipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he done a lot of uh, efforts on the recipe and then he drank it. He paid the best tea that we can just offer to the people because I find out that the customer they hear, they really enjoy the tea because they can actually taste what's the flavor inside of the tea. It's not just watering, right? Yeah, so we've done a lot of efforts on that. So uh, hopefully people will still continue to enjoy with the drink. Of course, mm -hmm. and yeah. you, you can definitely taste the... Uh... The freshness of the ingredients that you're using right like that strawberry duo yeah like that that's i mean you're eating a bunch of strawberries basically is what it tastes like mm -hmm. but it's just it, it's so cool the way that you've you've uh, fused that into the tea mm -hmm. so when you were first starting um did you ever have like any thought that you might do a bubble tea place or did you always know you wanted to do like some fusion thing uh to be honest at the beginning i was thinking to the to do the bubble tea place at the beginning very very beginning but yeah. after half year i think half after half year i changed my mind because bubble tea is not that popular in some way it's because if you just doing the bubble tea is not much different between the bubble tea the franchise bubble tea shop, right? So this is why we change our mind. We don't want to do any traditional thing. We want to do something different, something new. This is why comes up this idea. It takes time to come up this idea, this recipe and this packaging and this product. But at that time, we change our mind. We don't want to do the bubble tea. And before we open, it's funny. At the beginning, I just want to do the tea shop, just tea shop. And then why right now you see we are doing the co uh, coffee as well. It's tea cafe, so we do coffee and we do, uh, we do tea in here. Just because in Canada people like to drink coffee every day, we cannot just telling them, oh, we have tea in here. We need to provide something they are already familiar with. It. This is why we have the coffee in here. But the coffee in the market is just traditional for example you go to tim horton or Starbucks every day you just double double or americano or something tea a coffee latte it probably you already feeling so boring right this is why we come to something where we innovate stunning idea in here the traditional one we cannot beat them because they have a very uh good ingredient the coffee bean is probably better than us Right, and they know more coffee than this. Is why we want to do something very special. So, how long did it take you to come up with the recipes that you're using? It's, it it takes quite a bit long time. I would say at least one year or two years to come up with this recipe. Because at the beginning, I just try to do something similar bubble tea or just regular coffee, but. I don't feel very special. And then I try to make something different, slowly changing the recipe and adding some different thing. And then right now it just comes up here. At that time when I doing the experiments, I probably drink 15 or 16 cup a day. <laughs> and then we don't have any feelings what's different between the drinks. Yeah. It just, we feel, oh, it's the same. It's the same taste about every drink. So you, you use the word special there. Is that kind of in your mind where you're trying to be like, I need to come up with something special? Yeah. So this is why every drink in here is different. They are very units. So even though you're just drinking the uh, pretty blue tea, so you just straight forward the tea in here. The tea itself is very tasty because the tea we choose a lot of, we went to a lot of manufacturing, try to discuss the ocean and get the different sample. And then it just comes up this sample, uh, this tea packaging. 
and the tea leaf. So basically, you probably never can. You will very difficult to find the tea leaf in Canada. Okay. One thing you mentioned was the packaging,、mm-hmm. and I mean, we'll 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 start. I'm going to ask you about all the different types of tea that you have here.、Mm-hmm. But that packaging, you you had the the unique bag、um, or、That's、pouch, the pouch. The pouch. So I have the example in here. So for people that aren't watching this, it, it's a pouch that you can reseal at the top. Mm-hmm. Right. So in here, so this is the pouch. At the first beginning, I just bring this to my business connection, and I just want to show the drink to the person who is in the meeting. And then when they see, it, oh, they say, "Wow, this is so stunning. This is so special. Maybe you should use it on your business." So then I say, "Oh, okay. I I would think about it." And then、uh, after that, we find out um the papa shop in Mayfair. Then we started to use this one. And when I display on the table, the people just say, "Oh, it's so cute!" They start to come up to、uh, talk to me, and then I can introduce in,、uh, what's the drinks and what's the packaging comes up、uh, with the idea. Yeah, so it's in that way to attract more people to come to our pop up shop. It's very smart. It. Yeah. Because how do you like normally when you have like tea or coffee, it's in a little paper cup or something that you can't、right. see it. No. But so th- for people that aren't、uh, watching the video, in here. Yeah, th- there's a there's a bed or a pouch that's like.、Uh, Twelve inches tall, right? And it's maybe four inches, five inches wide, and <laughs>、yeah. it's got when you can see through it, and you can see the、um, you can see a different of the layers on the bottom one. It actually comes with the wafer and then the tea and the combination together. So when you mix up together, you will actually taste a trunk with the fruit and blend it with the tea together. So you don't feel、uh, like juice, but you actually taste. A fruit blended with the tea together、yeah. and tastes so awesome. Because normally when you drink the tea, it's just like、tea. water blended with the tea together, right? Or the milk tea. So you don't actually taste the tea inside with the fresh fruit. Well, yeah. The, yeah, and the cool thing is you can see all like the in that one. Is it strawberry? Yeah, yeah. it's a strawberry peach too. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> so you got the you got the color of the peach. You、right. can see the pieces of strawberry. Right. It just it's all floating, and so I was having a good time mixing it up in the in the pouch. Yeah, so this is the one when our customer at Mayfair they would like to shake it, shake it, shake, 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 shake it. it. In that way, they can just blend everything together. So is that the, is that the move, like to take it and, and sort of、yes. toss yeah. it up and down? Yeah, every in the bag, but not in the cup because uh, this one is just original to decide when the people shopping around at the mall. Then if they don't want to drink it, they can just seal it back and then put it into the purse, or they can hold it and keep. Shopping around, right? But right now, it's in downtown area. We will consider some business people if they want to purchase and put it into their desk. Then we will provide another packaging into a cup.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that packaging is amazing. Right, it just it works so well, and I've never seen anything anything like it. Yeah, we got a different colors. Yeah, so so this one here, this is the、um, the flourishing tea, right? Uh, flourish signature carbonated for tea. Yeah, this is this is your your signature signature product. Because at Mayfair, we only sell in the carbonated fruit tea. In that time, we don't have too much of the our drinks. Uh, people just love it with the carbonation fruit tea here. So all you had at Mayfair was like was the, the so, pouch tea. Yeah, so only uh maybe four flavors only. Okay. In Mayfair, yeah, but now we come up a really huge of the uh menus. So, so we got tea, we got uh coffee, we also have the light refreshments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what I what I'd like to do is sort of talk about the different all the different ones you guys have. Right.、Mm-hmm. So the very first one is Purity Brew.、Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? So Purity Brew is basically we are brewing the tea when the customer orders. So it's very straightforward. It's the tea itself. The different from the market is the tea flavor. So for example, the peach nice wulong. So it's one of the peach flavor wulong teas. So Uh, if you see the tea bag, they actually have the peach, uh, dry peach. The dry peach so there's actual, inside. There's actual peach in the tea bag. Yeah, yeah. and then it comes with a really, really strong of the peach, and then all the tea we choose on、uh, our purity brew is really light of the caffeine. So even though the people they want to drink some uh tea, but it doesn't affect their going to bed.、Mm-hmm. So it won't have too much of the uh caffeine. Into our tea, so we put the most less uh caffeine on our tea. If the people want some tea, but they don't want to have too much of the caffeine, yeah, 
yeah. which is I, I'm typically in that boat. So I appreciate that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you, so you're getting the fruit here and chopping it up yourself and getting it all prepared. Right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it takes quite a big, long time to prepare, but yeah, it is. This is why we need to do some effort, try to simplify the procedure. procedure to, yeah. yeah. And every day we just are uh, chopping some fresh fruit in here because as you can see the menu, we use a lot of fresh fruit into our drinks, into our garnish, into our coffee together. So we just doing like something with the fruity. So everything is regarding with the fruity. And so the next one we have is sparkling aid. So I got the sparkling A with this packaging and this is the pineapple sunrise. Okay. And then if you order sparkling A, it's good to drink it without any of the caffeine. It's only the freezy branded with the fruit together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's uh really good, especially in summer because it's really refreshing. And then it's good for any of the ages if the people doesn't want any of the caffeine because this one doesn't have caffeine at all. So is that one just like flavored water kind of then? Uh, flavored water, you also can eat it the fruit as well. And with the fruit, yes. Yeah, yeah. it comes with the fruit. Okay. Yes. Yeah. For example, this one is pineapple sunlight. You probably see some pineapple folding into the cup. Yeah, that and is- you still can see uh, the carbonation inside. But this carbonation is different as you normally purchase from uh, some markets. Because that one, they only have the a little bit flavors inside with the water, but this one it actually comes with the fruit and branded with the uh flavor together. Okay. And it also comes with a really strong of the pineapple uh flavors in here. Yeah, that yeah. one is very popular actually. It, yeah. When I get this idea, I drink it. Oh, I really like it. This one because it's not the heavier to compare the other product because some right. product that it include the tea, include the caffeine, but this mm-hmm. one doesn't have any caffeine, which means I can drink during the evening. Yeah, uh, and so- if some kids they come in, this is one of the good option for them if the uh, parent doesn't want any of the caffeine for the kids, right? So it's. Uh, good to have some options for some type of the people. And so you, you're doing the bottling for that here? Yes. I'm just, I'm amazed at all the different packaging you have. And, and yeah. like the, the logo that you've come up with, it like, uh, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. How long did that take to come up with that? Uh, how long? Yeah. Uh, so from back and forth of the discussion, it takes almost two or three months. Or more than that, I don't know, because I'm really picky on everything. And then I decided the logo with my team together, but they just like back and forth to editing, changing until I satisfy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it really seems to me like this. I, I got to comment on the space here too. Right. It's very clean and just like almost like a, a meditative thing where it just calms you. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Nice. Like Thank this you. space in itself. And, I, and I, I would imagine it seems like everything is in here with intention right like you've intended for everything to be the way it is Mm -hmm. because you did the design for this place right yes i'm the one to execute for all the designing here but i got uh, a couple people that helping me to doing the designing so for example i got a best friend from australia she is the one to um be the general uh designer. designer she helped me to design all the uh things in here and then uh, the second one is my sister-in-law and then he helped me to actually build the chairs and the tables in here and he joined, he made it. Oh, and so then, you made these tables and chairs? Not this one, but the bench. But all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So all That's the cool. long benches, is, uh, he made it, he just hand joined. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got the other person. Um, he also, she also helped us to uh pick what is the best furniture we should use in here to match up with the theme together. Yeah. So it's just like it's not only me. It's just like the whole team helping us to doing the such of a hard work in here. But most of the things in here is like handcraft, and we also have the um dry flower the plant. the dry flower and then i grow all the plants in here just like execute all the decoration part and then we also got a really amazing team uh for our construction side to helping us to build the kitchen and then the house stuff yeah there's been a lot of effort and thought that's put into this place right everything yeah. just comes together so well yeah and so the, the next uh, product that you guys have is the slush yogurt. Mm-hmm. Mm, that one is not <laughs> in the market right now because it's winter. But so I would like to give some introductions for the slush yogurt. So when you usually drink the slush specific such as the 
orange juice. It's just nuts or smoothies. So I put some yogurt in this product. It's actually the yogurt flavor with the fruit blending together. And I also have one very special. It called Rainbow Paradise. So. Uh, so the Rainbow Paradise, it will come into this packaging. So yeah. Rainbow Paradise. Yeah, yes. so actually you can see the different layer when you, it's actually in the market. So for example, there will be three different colors in one packaging. And, and, so it, it, and so it comes in one of those cans. Yes. yes. So okay. that's why it's called Rainbow. So you will see different of the colors. That would be wild. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very tasty because those different color is not just the color, it's different flavor. So for example, the red one will be the uh, strawberry. The so it comes with the mango, strawberry, berry, yeah. and then the green grape as well. So when you have one sip, you will sip it a different flavors all in one. Mm -hmm. Or you can just sip it one by one. Right. Yeah, like, like you, so could you leave it so all the flavors sort of are separated? Yeah, if you, you did, If you didn't want to shake them all up or whatever? Yeah, actually you can do it. And so what is it? What do you prefer? Do you prefer to have it separate or do you want to mix them all together? It depends on the pe on the people. For me, what, what about you? I will separate. Okay. I'm separate. a mix. <laughs> oh, okay. So you both. Just depends. Yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah. Because when you mix, you will have a different kind of the feeling in one drink. It's just like fantastic of the drink. Yeah. I just want to have different flavor in one drink. And so is that only available in the summertime? I think so. Why now it's just too cold. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't right. want to put in the market. Yeah. <laughs> I got to try that one when it comes out. Oh, yeah. really? I will let you know. <laughs> I want to try that. So the, the next one, we went over the... Um, the uh, carbonated, carbonated fruit tea, tea. and yeah. that's that's again that's sort of the signature drink they have here that started the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But then the next one is the flower tea, mm -hmm. which is the one that the the hibiscus one like blew my mind. So we had two different flower tea in here. One is the hibiscus, one is the rose tea, rose, rose emerald. emerald. Yeah. So basically, we are using the fresh flowers to brew the tea. And then we also add some eatable flowers. You can see the bottom. That one is the bottom is eatable rose. And that one we are putting some passion fruit on it to combine the flavor too. Because pepper skill is a little bit sour, we put the passion fruit on it to make that balance. So which means when you drink it, it's sweet, sour, but it's just perfect balance. How long did it take for you to come up with that combination of those two together? It took a while. I probably tried over a hundred cups already when I tried to make right. that product. He changes our recipes uh, a lot. Like, <laughs> for a lot. Like still? Yeah. You, He's still, still changing the recipe really? every time. Yes. yes. For Dude, the that one that one blew my blows my mind right now. So if you can somehow improve it, then it'll be crazy. Yeah. yeah. And I would just try to keep improving. Yes. For me, it's not always perfect. I try to make something perfect. So like, perfect. do you feel that tea right now is not perfect? A little bit, sometimes, because I feel sometimes it's not perfect, but sometimes it's good. It's very hard to say. It just depends on that day feeling. Yeah. This is why we also have the very special pastry. Every day is different because it all depends on me. It's funny. So this, but it's good thing because every time the people they just walking, yeah. they see something new, something different. Right. Every day, right? So do you do you have drinks that you do just like a feature? Or like a like a something that you might have just for one day or something. Yes, yeah, so I think so. For why now we have one drink is very featured for the Halloween because you know the pumpkin season is pumpkin latte. Yes, pumpkin yeah. latte is why now. Usually you go to any coffee shop, it's just the pumpkin spicy latte, right? Yeah, I know how to make it. It's just basically the pumpkin syrup. And, and we brand it with the uh, coffee latte or just yes. the latte and the cinnamon and the cinnamon and here i try to make the real pumpkin bite and brand with the different syrup to make that pumpkin syrup but actually include the pumpkin bite inside so you there's pieces of pumpkin in there yes. yes so when you drink it you actually eating the pumpkin and tasting the pumpkin but it's latte Oh, you, you still, yeah. that's crazy you still yeah. have a difference so here we try to make everything very fresh very different you know, pumpkin latte is good, but you just power for me, I get boring. So this is why I try to make something special. You I, just... like, I like the the way your brain works. Mm -hmm. I like I like the thought process. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so the, 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 the last one is the coffee lattes. Mm -hmm. And so what was the drink that we had that day when we were here on the, or on Sunday? It was a coffee drink. Oh, that one is uh, from our uh, special coffee line. It's called the Incredible Fruity Coffee. The one you was trying is the Energizing uh, Pitch Coffee. Yes. So do you want to introduce your product? So I, th that one I can't get over because that was coffee, but it, it had fruit in it. Like I've never tasted that kind of combination ever. Right. Yeah. It's it, a fruity coffee. It's fruity coffee. Uh, it's just funny story. At that day, I just want to drink coffee, but I don't want to drink any drink for coffee, such as black coffee or double double. And then because, you know, we have the base in here already. I just put the peach into that coffee and then, oh, it's good. It's good flavor. And then I let Anna to try and then she like it. But it's very hard to describe that feeling, that tasting. This is why we're saying incredible. Incredible. It's just giving the people having some thought if you could come up a really great name, that would be perfect. Yeah. And we said incredible because as Isaac said, it's hard to explain the feeling and then it's really energ uh, energizing to your body as you I can feel, right? I think that was the one where I tried it and I was like, what the fuck is this? Right. And <laughs> it was really so different. Virtualizing. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. But again, I didn't know how to describe it. No. And then uh, when we uh, explain to some of the people, they might not interesting in that way because it's, it's so hard to describe the feeling and then they might not heard about this type of the product before. So we need to take time. Maybe we can do some samples in the future and just starting to let people to try it out. But it's hard because underneath on the bottom one, it comes with a punch of the fruit and then the coffee together. You have to mix up well and then in order to sip the fruit together. Oh, I don't know if we did that. Oh, did you? I have, oh. a feel I have a feeling like we didn't mix it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. If you mix up, Tastes is so great. Oh, so it would have been different again. Right. Because yeah. it was already really great as it was. Yeah. I, I, I don't think we mixed it up though. No. Okay. Be I feel I feel like with all the drinks here, you should sort of mix them up, right? Right. Yeah. Because we try to make it pretty as this one. And then when you drink it, you have to um, mix up because the eight pro flour is all on the bottom. Yeah. And then we try to make it as pretty as we want to give it to you. But when you drink it, you have to mix up or shake it, whatever the way you want to do. But it's good to mix up. You got a, another taste on that. So as far as like the coffee, um, the coffee and lattes, mm -hmm. what are the different unique things you're doing with those? So for example, I would like to give you a sample, the special lemon coffee. Okay. So probably when the people come here, they see, oh, lemon coffee, probably just the coffee, putting a piece of lemon into it. It's not. So it's, for the cold drink, it's basically for the sparkling, lemon sparkling coffee. It's very refreshing. We are using a lot of sparkling in here. So it's sweet, sour, and then with the lemon flavor, and but a little bit coffee tasting in the top. So when you drink it, you did a mix it, you will different flavor. But when you mix together, you will very stunning. It's, I would say refreshing is the most what we are using in here, right? right? Refresh, refreshing and we virtualizing, energizing. Those words is, can come up into the drinks. Yeah. So those the words we always talk to the people in the feeling of the drink. And then uh, as, as I mentioned that of the special lemon coffee, it comes with the fresh lemon inside and then we mess it and get the uh, juice, juice from the lemon. Okay. Yeah. And then when you drink it, you actually can uh, taste the differences of the lemon on the bottom and then uh, the coffee on the top. Yeah. And then if the people, they are looking to try something new and then especially healthy of the drinks, and this type of the fruity coffee is definitely another option for the people because that way it's 100% of dairy free. So it doesn't have any milk inside. So it's good for someone who doesn't want to drink the milk. And what's what's the deal with the uh, the crunchy one or the um, what is it the crunchy? Yeah. What, what is that thing? Crunchy diagonal coffee latte. So this is why well, now it doesn't look very good, but yeah. um, because it's been a while. So when you make it, actually it's funny. So we are putting the very special is the crunchy salty caramel on the top, and then on the middle will be the coffee. Yeah. And the bottom will be the latte. Oh. So at so, the yeah, so at the beginning, when you drink it, you just separate it. 
But right. when you mix together, you will give you another feeling, which means one drink, two different feelings. Right. So that one right there, so that's the equivalent of if it, if it had been mixed up. Yeah. That's what it's like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But so, this so, one is already sitting for uh, 10 12. or 15 minutes, so it doesn't give you the good layers. Yeah, no, I understood. <laughs> but so on that one, there's like a caramel layer on the top. Right. Yeah. And so does it, does that caramel then, I guess, does it dissolve or? It's a crunchy caramel candy. So okay. at the first bite, you actually can uh, sip it with the little bit candies on the top. Oh. And then the more you wait, the more it will melt it into the milk together. Yeah, because yeah. we put the hot coffee into the candy. So at the beginning, the candy, you will slowly melt it but you still can sip the candy into your mouth. That candy is very special, very tasty because it's crunchy. So which means it's a little bit crispy. But when it melted, the crunchy candy will be get into the coffee and with the latte. So you basically will be the salty caramel candy, a salty caramel coffee latte at that yes. time. Oh my God. And this is the, actually it's the Korean style. And then remember uh, at the first beginning of the lockdown, the people just stay at home and then they're using like 400 branded with the coffee. And this is the upgrade of the 400 uh, instant branded coffee. Yeah. Is, and, that where you, is that where you got the idea to do that? Yeah. yeah so actually for uh, our products, it comes with a different ideas from Asian. So we got the idea from Japan. We got the idea from Korea. We got the idea from China. So... He just learned it in different way to try to brew in the tea and make the light refreshments as well. I think you're you're doing a great job of telling everyone, like basically, everyone needs to come here and sort of order everything off the menu. Mm-hmm. Do like do like ten or fifteen trips and just order everything because you're gonna have <laughs> such a different experience. Yeah, like order the same drink multiple times because right. you can drink them differently. Right. This is so crazy. I like. I want to thank you guys for doing what you're doing because it's this is just so insane. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's funny we have a customer already tried to do it. So she been here a few times. Every time she ordered a different item and then she told us she will try each different item in the menu eventually. Right. Yeah, I think it's happened. Do you, do you have one item that's been the most popular so far? Yeah. Strawberry peach too. I was going to say, is yeah. it the strawberry peach too? <laughs> yeah, that one is so popular because you come with fresh strawberry at the first time you if you don't know any new product in the market probably you want to try something you already get three minutes so such as the strawberry you think oh strawberry is not that difficult to imagine so basically they will eat the strawberry at the beginning right but this has, one is very popular in here has anybody else freaked out over the hibiscus one like i did i think so <laughs> i think so and yeah. then i just had one customer she did try at the hibiscus and then after she finished her drink, she just came back to me and said, oh, your high biscuit is just so great. Yeah, that's what I heard from them because I actually didn't try it at the first beginning. And then after Isaac made the drink, I just, oh, okay, maybe I can promote it to the people to try it out. And then uh, like you and my some of other friends, the first time they tried it, they said, oh, this is so amazing. Yeah. Because it's like more likely uh, sour and sweet. So you never try this kind of the drinks in any of the tea plates, right? So it's just like something is really stunning on the drink. So this is definitely I would like to recommend to the people if they come into here to try it out. I would agree 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so with the teas, how many different ones can you get? Like the option of having it hot or cold? How many of them offer? do you offer? Like, do you ask the people, do you want it hot or cold? Right. Yeah, we all... so. For the first time the people come in, so we always ask, so we will give them a little bit introduction, such as the, we, our business, our product, our menu, and our cultures. And after that, we will ask them what are they looking for, hot tea or cold drink or coffee or tea. So we want to give them some recommendation, try to provide the best service. You know, some product is very expensive. Some product is a little bit less expensive. We don't do just telling the people, oh, this is the good product for the expensive one. No, it's not our job. So yeah. we just try to get the best product for them. How many of the different ones can you get like hot and cold, would you say? Uh, like, is it the majority you could get either way or just some? 
it's just some. So basically, the carbonation fifty it can be only cold because the carbonation, if you can imagine, if you drinking hot carbonation, you will not have any bubble feeling. This is why it's not able to do any hot drink. But except for the carbonation stuff, basically everything we can do hot. Awesome. Right. So that's a whole nother thing. Like not only can you have the thing like cold and have two different experiences, but then you could have it warm mm-hmm. and have it or have it hot. And that's a whole nother experience. Right. Especially in summer, if you just putting all the cold drink in the market, maybe people doesn't want it because it's so cold outside. They want to have something to keep their body warm. So except the carbonated fit tea, as Isaac mentioned that, and, um, the special lemon coffee, most of the drinks, we can make it in hot. Yeah, it's just like different options of the drinks. And then if you drink it in a cold way, you will get different feelings. If you drink it in the hot way, it will have another feelings of the drinks. Mm-hmm. And yeah. not, not only do you guys have beverages, but you also have some food. Yes. yes. Some desserts. Yes. So I would say our dessert is very special because I make it. This is why I say special. <laughs> of course, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for example, the tiramisu cupcake. So usually when you eat the tiramisu, you just very traditional, the coffee flavors with some cheese on it. But here we have a different flavor and it's in the small cup. So this is why you can easier to carry out with the small cup. And it's not that it's not too much for you because when you're eating the uh, pastry, Usually you think that is too much, but it's just perfect amount for the people. And we also have a different flavor, matcha, blueberry, strawberry, chocolate, and coffee, like the traditional one. I did try the matcha one and it was excellent. Yeah. I think it was like the perfect size, like you're saying. Yes. Because if you eat more, probably you will say, oh, that is too heavy. But if you eat less than the cup of the amount, you will think, oh, that is not enough. And I'll say that I don't normally really care for matcha that much, mm-hmm. but that th- what you did with that cup, like it, it, it was like the best part of the matcha, but it's also so creamy mm-hmm. that it was just, it was fantastic. Yeah. Because you have the different layers. So every layer, you will have the cream and the cake together to make you kind of balancing. I would say that word balancing. And so for, for those cups that you make, you don't have all of those flavors every day, right? No, every day will be the different flavors. This is why every day, every time you come, probably you will have special flavor or probably you will the same flavor you have tried before. But usually every day will become a different flavor. Yeah, and I want to say that uh, for our live refreshment, every day you come with a special and limited offer because... It depends on his feeling. Every day he just like uh created the new stuff, created the new um live refreshments, even though something is not on the menu. Yeah, and then uh one day he came up with the red velvet sweat throw, and then that one is not our on our menu. Mm-hmm. And then today he just made like a fruity mousse cake, and that is so amazing. It comes with a different of the fruit into a different layers. Yeah. On the first uh the First layer, it was the mango one. Mm. The second one is the strawberry. So it come up with different all in one cake. Yeah, and the bottom is the spongy cake. It's the spongy cake. Yeah, so that one is not on the menu. So every day, if the people that ask, we just say it's special because maybe he might be making the same maybe after a month or two months. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. yeah. I'm also planning to make the pumpkin tiramisu cupcake in the... Oh, Halloween. no. I need to try that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So probably I will tell you that. Yes. Okay. So please, when that's available, right. please tell me because I'm coming that day. Yeah, okay. No sure. problem. So when you're coming up with those flavors for the... Uh, for the desserts or the cakes mm-hmm. is it always the same like sort of base of the the spongy cake and then you just add different flavors to it or, or are you actually making it differently it's differently so because even though the cake for example the matcha tiramisu sometimes i would just make the matcha uh spongy cake in the base and for the strawberry tiramisu sometimes we just make the strawberry flavor spongy cake it's different time different base or probably i just try to mix up together for example if someday oh how about that try something different i try to make the strawberry spongy cake and mix with the matcha flavor it will be very different that's so crazy <laughs> I <was> like, huh. okay 
okay, sure, I try to not do that. <laughs> so, so for the food, did you always intend to have some food here, or did you originally was it just going to be drinks? Uh, we always try to provide the food here because the live refreshment. When you eating and drinking together, you will very best feelings because here the environment is already good, specific for someone who want to have a high tea. Usually, when you have high tea, you will like to drink something and eat something at the same time. Right, and the people they just like to enjoy the high tea time. If you just are drinking, it's just drinking. But if you are drinking and meanwhile eating the like refreshment, it's a good combination because the drink doesn't. Uh, come up with that kind of the speed, the same as the light refreshment. If they put it together, it's just like a good combination about the sweetness of the level. Going back to this location here, how long ago did you find out that you were going to be able to have this space? Oh, uh, we spent how long? We spent almost uh, nine months or I... maybe a year to look for a location because we actually check out uh, the most of the location in downtown. So we are really familiar with each of the location. And then finally, we look for this space because it's tiny in here and it's small. So we was thinking that, oh, maybe we could use this small space for the business. Mm -hmm. We are not looking for something like huge, fantastic bay because we are pretty brand new and then we don't know what is going on on the business. Mm -hmm. So we just want to do something like small and then can do it like um everything to try out for the people. Mm -hmm. And here is very convenient because on the right side is the bus stop is next to the RBC is the most biggest one bus stop in the town. And the left side is the government street which means there is a lot of tourists in the summer. Yeah. And on the other side is the Bay Center, which means... Yeah, you're right across the street from the mall. Yeah, so it's very convenient to area. It's just between everywhere. It's in the middle. So I think that is the perfect location for and, us. And when did you sign the papers, though, to get this particular location? How long ago was that? I think from... Last year on September. And then we actually got this location on this year of January. Yeah. Oh, in January. Yeah. Yeah. You just ongoing. You just keep on going. Right. You okay. just take time to discuss more detail with the landlord and something with our construction team. You just take time. And after we sign the lease, you, the COVID is just coming, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so you actually signed the lease before COVID. Right. Yeah. Oh. And then we haven't started until actually on March because the first time when we got this location, we got so many problems in here because of the heritage building. So we have to figure out what's the capacity of the um space, what is the uh, capacity for the water, for the electrical, something like that. But we take like almost a month and half to figure out those problems. And then suddenly the COVID is coming mm -hmm. in Canada. But yeah. in that way, we just need, we have to do this because yeah. we already took this space in here. We cannot stop in right now. So what we can do is just like keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. And try to do our best, right? right. To, put, to protect us and to protect the customer. Right. Of course. Yeah, it's very important to be safe. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if we took this space maybe after the COVID, we might not keep doing that because mm -hmm. it's just like a huge risk for us and mm. it's not worth it to doing that but luckily we took that like before of the COVID and then we think this is a good opportunity it's also a challenge as well yeah okay so yeah I kind of, I'm kind of wondering about that like when you first did it there, everything was like the world was kind of normal mm -hmm. or it was like a totally different world at that point yeah you and then COVID hits what is it what was going through your head at that point like March when things started shutting down yeah, so it's very difficult to get any permit, any information during that time. Specifically, the government's um government department is very hard to contact because most of the uh most of the department they shut down or they are working at the home. So it's very difficult at that time. We try to look at all the different information online, try to call different people, send an email. Probably we send 10 or 20 email at least for a day and call, call a couple different departments to get the information to ensure we can keep going. 
Right. And then also uh, we find out this is a good opportunity because the COVID and bringing to the people has a huge difference of the life. Maybe some of them, they might not awareness of the changes, but when they see through from the years like after, people is more care when they have. It's like more caring their body. They are more caring. They are just like different of the lifestyle. So that's why that might be another mission. We want to do it to keep their lifestyle is changing into a healthy way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you want to be an option for people to be able to do that. Right. Yep. Well, I think you're definitely on the right track with the fact that you're not just pumping it full of sugar. Mm-hmm. No. No. At all. <laughs> no. 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 You're just like you have the natural... Uh, fructose i guess from the sh- from the uh, fruit mm-hmm. and that and then you're just getting the fruit like fresh fruit fruit flavor right yeah. it's difficult for us sometimes because you know we are doing the fresh fruit in here sometimes it come with the season right sometimes it come with the season at the beginning we are very difficult to pack our products because we want to make sure the food is all available at all the season at the beginning, probably I would say we, for the example, the carbonation fruit tea, we have ten different product. But why we now have different flavors? On, different flavor, but uh, one product line. Yeah, but why now we just pick four different product because those fruit is all available at all the season. So, in, like in the summertime, would you ever do um, maybe like a feature flavor using fresh local, right. like local blueberries or something mm-hmm. in yeah. blueberry season? Yeah, and you can only get it. But it, it's all fresh. We can only get it like um, in September or whenever it is. Mm-hmm. Right. W- will you be doing stuff like that? Yes. Actually, at the beginning, we have the blueberry flavor. I, I can tell you. Yeah. So at that time, we might think to have the blueberry flavor. And also, we have the mango flavor. Uh, I can give you an example at the pot of shop. We have the mango flavor. It's just a very limited option because it's expensive in the uh, in the winter the mango and then it's very difficult to buy it. and i remember one week i go to all the superstore all the supermarket in the island try to buy the mango but it's just interesting there's no one mango available in the market right really it, you just couldn't couldn't find it couldn't no, find the same as the strawberry because last year it got something happens about the state and then we couldn't find any of the strawberries. So basically in that week when we was at the pop-up shop, we almost sold out everything. Yeah. We sold out the fruit, we sold out the drinks. So we only got one drink. It was the lemon lemon tea. We can just sell it to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the pop-up shop when you were at Mayfair, did you find that it was it was very well received? Yes. Yeah, so the feedback is pretty good. So most of the people, they like it. They like our product. It's just different. And how different was the product at that point? Like the, the carbonated tea, how different is it now versus back then? Is it is it very different? Uh, basically, it's very similar. Yeah. It's just the flavor a little bit different because some flavor is more popular th- than the other flavors. We right. are trying to provide the best flavor in the market, right? When we was at the Papa shop, we actually have a more flavors on our carbonated tea because we only have that product line when we was at the Papa shop. That's what you were saying. There was 10, right? Uh, not 10, ten. but not maybe ten. six or seven. Okay. Yeah. yeah, six and seven. Some of them is just like a limited offer mm-hmm. because we couldn't find the food in that season. So that's why we only have certain amount of the fruit uh, in stock. So that's why we just put it as a limited offer. Mm-hmm. Okay. So since you guys did the pop-up shop, like from then to now, mm-hmm. did you come up with all the other types of stuff you're doing? Mm-hmm. Or did you have some of these recipes like during the pop-up time, you just weren't doing it? Yes, for the strawberry, we still putting in the market. That one is so popular in the pot shop. We still keeping that recipe in here right now. But something changed. For example, but as far as like the purity brew or the um the flower tea, did you have those recipes at that time? Uh, mm. we I would say we do have the recipe, but he just keep changing. <laughs> I just keep changing. Yeah. I okay. not. You shouldn't use changing, uh, improving. Improving, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Always <laughs> improving, right? Yeah, yeah, I just keep improving all the recipe to try to make sure to provide the best to the customer. Right. And ha- have either of you ever owned a business before? No. no uh, actually, I own think... the business, but we do some small business like through online. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I 
I remember I opened an online shop when I was young. It's pretty young, kind of the right. high school in back to Asian at that time. I think it's small business, right? Right, but, but it's more focusing on online platform, right? Yeah. And what was that? What were you? What were you selling? I'm selling all the different thing, all the different small things, something. Such as the papery stuff or small booty, small booty, yeah, everything, anything just popular in the market. I sold, I sold okay. that, yeah. But it's not something food and beverage. I never done that before in the small business. But experience, I have those experience. Mm -hmm. It's just not yeah. be the owner try to provide the survey do the business because when you become an owner, you have a lot of small thing need to deal with. Every day. And need of to course. pay attention to. Well, now you have like employees, right? right? Yes, we do. We do have few employees here. We are very like them. They are working very well in here. Yeah, actually for our employees, they all my our uh customer uh from Mayfair. It's when funny. we post it, yeah, when it, it's so funny when we post it, they just apply because they really love the dream uh on our products so that's why we had the interview with them and after we talked to them we just like to invite them into the team because they're really passionate about all the drinks in here they really want to know uh how to make the drinks they just like really passionate on everything for our branding so um also they are not just doing um the beverage drink in here they also helping us to putting all the efforts into the marketing as well because they really enjoyed it everything they want to do it for the business mm -hmm. what kind of what how does that make you feel when you have people excited like that are working here as well as you guys i feel that it's a granted and also my pressure because uh i feel that they are not just loving uh, our drinks they are more likely to helping us to grow together as on the interview i told them oh because it's really brand new of the business we are also uh, learning on the path same as you so we are not like uh, knowing everything if you come up any of the good idea you show me you teach me i will welcome to learn it in that way with you together for sure mm -hmm. so i'm so proud to be the people who working in my team because they feel like this is the home for them even though my employee she doesn't work on that day just coming all the time with her family mm -hmm. she just loved this space it, that, that says a lot yeah if somebody spends a lot of time here but also wants to come on their time off yes mm -hmm. that's huge yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably some uh, some employee we see them we see them every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny. Well, well, they, they can't go anywhere and get it, get this stuff. They, there's nowhere to go. No. So if you want this stuff, you have to come here. We are <laughs> unique. We are special in the market. So <laughs> yeah. it's very unique. Yeah. So in in all of your um your travels, sort of doing the research for this place mm -hmm. and trying different teas, did you have a tea that was like your favorite or that stood out? Yes. Yeah, so. They are all good. It's just different. So, for example, I go to some bubble tea. That bubble tea is very stunning because the outlook is very special, very colorful. But when I drink it, it's mostly like dairy product. This is what I don't like it because I cannot drink a much dairy product. This is why I come to the tea just without any dairy item that we such as the meal even though the dairy product in here we all have the substitute for people who cannot drink the milk right because we had to consider that is one of part of the customer is the world not everybody can drink the milk yeah <laughs> yeah it's amazing how many people i know that have a hard time with milk products right mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we come up as a non dairy drinks in here or any of the substitute. So people can either uh trying like purity or just trying like uh a substitute into the drink together. And do you have any teas though when you were doing your research that stood out as like this one's like amazing? Like are there any that you can think of that you had somewhere where you're like this one in particular is really good? Uh I would say flower's tea is really stand out on my checklist. Because okay. I love to drink tea, but when I got the flowers tea, it's just like another feeling of the tea. Yeah, so for example, the rose tea, it comes with the eatable flower. So I never had that before in my life. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and I can actually bite the flowers inside, and it's good for my body because I learned some of the benefit of the tea, how it's going to help my body build up uh, well. So that's why I always tell people, it's not just drinking the tea, you're also drinking the benefit into the drink as well. And so the, the benefits for your body, has that been factored into some sort of some of the combinations you've done? Mm, I think so. She getting beauty. <laughs> uh yeah not really yeah so for example the rose tea is really good to toss in the of the body and then especially for the girls after they've done their period it's good to toss in the bad blood from out of the body so this one maybe not too many people knowing what is the benefit inside of the tea and then this one we only use like um a rose tea inside and blend it with the uh, eatable flower so it doesn't add up too much of the ingredient inside. Yeah. So basically it's like purity boo but upgraded into a little bit ingredients. Yeah. So probably when you see we are brewing the tea, you can see the different flowers, the different small rose. We are using the f- fresh dry rose into making the tea. And and when we're looking at uh, at beauty here, are there things you want to do in the future that you have like in mind that are going to be co- upcoming, like different food items, different drink items? Mm, good what do you, yeah, like what do you have coming up that you think you want to be doing? Good question. First, healthy drink. So we always put the healthy into the priorities because here we always say less caffeine, less returns. You st- the healthiest substitute, healthy alternatives. So probably we will do more tea combination with the fresh food or probably something just crazy thing into my mind. One day I just try to provide to the customer. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but we are not limited just doing the tea or coffee or any light refreshment in here. We also thinking to expand doing some small business gathering and some e- private event. We also have the cocktail party here. It's funny, when we have the grand opening, we apply the one-day co- uh, alcohol license, license yeah. to provide the cocktail. The cocktail is very special. Usually when you drink the cocktail, it's basically the different... Like the vodka with vodka. the Sprite, vodka with the uh, Coke, something like that, right? Yes. It's yeah. straightforward on the uh, alcohol. But in here, I just done another crazy thing. So he putting the fruity together and branded with the alcohol and branded with our tea together. So the first thing you feel, oh, tastes so good because it's the fruit. And then the more you drink it, the more you feel a little bit dizzy, but you won't get drunk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you, you never get drunk. I usually just drink a couple of the cocktail in the house before I go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. So then- you're, you're a bartender too. Kind of, I mean, but actually, I was the bartender, but, but she, he uh, is the one to make it a drink. Yeah, but yeah. she actually is the bartender. She has the experience in bartender before. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah but uh, that was long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah. But you still have the skills, right? Uh, I maybe. think so. <laughs> <laughs> but she never so, made any cocktail for me. <laughs> you are in charge for that. Okay, I'm in charge. <laughs> So is that something you're going to be working towards, getting a liquor license to be able to do that? Uh, it's very hard to say. We will find out that in the future. But why right now we are just right. thinking to provide the cocktail in the private event or yeah. something small business gathering, right? Mm-hmm. So if there's an event that, that warrants it, then you'll get like a one-day license and you'll do it. Yes. yes. If yeah. somebody having like a small party, a birthday party, a wedding party, we would like to do for a small group. Yeah, as you can see, the space is not that big. Maybe it's good to starting with some of the small good to see oh, if they like or not. Then in that time, we can just provide it with our cocktail drinks together and then some of the live refreshments starting in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it would be really awesome if that ever does become like a thing where it's just sort of you have it. Because if you're, if you're sort of revolutionizing tea in the way that you are, I think doing drinks like that, again, doing something very different would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want we always want to provide a different thing in the market. So we are very new people in this generation. For me, I don't want to try, I I don't eat any same thing in the same trees. For example, every time I go to Vancouver, I always try the different restaurant. This is my personality. <laughs> Do you have any favorite restaurants in Vancouver? Yeah, so some of the restaurants I always go back because they are very good. 
Which which are those? Because I don't I don't I'm not familiar with restaurants in Vancouver. Yeah. For, <laughs> for example, there is a Japanese hot dog in the downtown Vancouver. It's very special. It, oh, that one is my favorite too. Yes. Yeah, they have it's a the Japanese hot dog. Yeah, yeah, it's a Japanese hot dog. They will put a different ingredients into the hot dog. For example, they use the noodle. And put it into the hot dog. In the, in the middle of the hot dog. In the middle of the hot dog, dog right? Like okay, it's so, very tasting. So what what is this called? Uh I don't remember the name. Yeah, okay. we don't remember the I'm name. I'm gonna have to re- I'm gonna write this down. Yeah, okay. so that one is one of our favorite trip if we are going to downtown of the Vancouver. Yeah. But sometimes he just took me to different of the restaurant, even though we just go into the one day trip. But mm. I really love something that I really enjoy it. He just said, Oh, let's try something new. So, on the trip, he just planned to go to different of the places all in one day. Yeah. And then we can just eat like fully in a different lifestyle, like, maybe Thai style, Korean style, Japanese style, and then uh, Italian style, just like different kind of the food. Yeah. So, he has a really sensitive of the tongue. So, that's why when he starts to drink something or eat something, he will know it was the ingredient inside. Mm-hmm. Then he can put in his ingredient into this one. Yeah. So any do you ever get inspired for your drinks from food? Mm, yes. So I'm thinking get a new crazy drink. Really? Yeah. Again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh I think I'm to use the lemon glass with the lemon and then with the some vegetable to make the tea. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, that sounds crazy, I don't know. Right? I don't know. Probably you will try that in the future, but maybe it's very good, or maybe not. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I always try something different. I'm not. I'm not gonna call anything crazy. <laughs> like I, I think you can pull off anything. Yeah, I, I would try. I would try. Yeah. So, is, are there any other restaurants in Vancouver that I should know about that you can think of? Mm, I'm not sure because every time I just Google search the name. Yeah. And try to look at the different information do you do you go based on a rating mm, not really sometimes i just look at the different review and look at the menu and to see what is the special because i went to a lot of different restaurants and know how special are different right i think the most important for the first thing people would like to look at the pictures if they have the good pictures, oh, let's click into and what's the menu looks like, what's the environment looks like, what kind of the food they have. Mm-hmm. This is the how we started at the first point to choosing up uh, some of the restaurants. Mm-hmm. Okay. So do you like go on Instagram and just start looking at things? I would say... Or on um, Google. Mostly it's Google. Google. Okay. Yeah. So what about Victoria? Where do you guys eat here in Victoria? Victoria. In my house. <laughs> just at home? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, because I I very good at cooking, so this is why sometimes I just cook at the house. But so, what way, do you like to make? Uh, different kind of the food. Sometimes make the India uh India curry. Sometimes just which, make which kind of curry? Uh, yellow curry. Green oh, curry. that's my favorite. Oh, really? Green yes. curry. Yeah. But yeah. one thing I would like to uh complimentary about Isaac, he made a really really good steak. Mm, because really? normally when you go out for the state i feel because when we are in asian and then the state is really juicy, juicy. and come with different of the flavors of the uh, state and then here i feel a little bit too dry yeah and then sometimes it doesn't have too much of the flavors on it and the eyes can make like juicy juicy orange on the state yeah it's just like different kind of the uh, fruity flavor into the state Okay. Yeah, as you can imagine, because the idea comes with the same as the drink. So he tried to use a lot of foodie and put it into the food together. And it comes with really, really juicy when you have each bite. So you need to revolutionize the tea game and have, <laughs> st- have steak here with it. Yeah. Okay. That's too much for yeah. him, I think. When, when are you going to start serving steak here? Uh, <laughs> Maybe he can do a special for you. I can do a special for yes. you. Just for you. Sorry about the audience. <laughs> You just bought a footy guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, are you what? What days are you guys open? Uh, we actually open at September fifteenth. So yeah. basically, it's just within two weeks, right? 
Very brand new. No, but uh, September 29th, it was uh, the first day as the soft opening. The very first day was September 29th. Yeah, yes. very first day, we just opened up the door. We didn't do any of the celebration because we want to see, oh, how we are going to attract the market, right? And then uh, we opened for two weeks as a soft opening, just trying to do some improvement and asking people's uh, feedback that anything we can improve it, anything mm-hmm. we can do better. Then after two weeks, we uh, officially opened on October 15th as our grand opening. And then that day, we getting a lot of feedback. People come, started coming back and then celebrating the uh, grand opening, opening with us. Yeah, so I guess that's one... Tomorrow's your one-month anniversary because this is the 28th. Yeah, oh, basically, right. yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's been a month. Nice. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> are, realize are you finding, that. Are you finding, too, that... Are you finding, too, that... Um, People are repeat customers. Like once they come in and they try it, mm-hmm. then they then they keep coming back. Yeah, we have a lot of just repeat customer. We call them regular customer already yeah. because they come. Really loyalty and really lovely customer. The same as the uh, Mayfair people. The Mayfair customer they still coming back even though uh they just try our carbonated for tea at that time, but they just keep coming back to try like different of the flavors, different of the drinks in here. Mm-hmm. They're really really. Uh, nice and I could remember some of the people the yeah name. when they come back and then I can just remember them and then uh, another funny thing because I normally will put uh, this pouch yeah. into the window display and then some people they just remember the bag oh are you the bag from Mayfair yeah. I said yes oh, really? that was us yeah. yeah so we got some of the little girls they can remember us I got some of like uh, elder generation they can remember the bag I think that is a great thing. We use the bat as our signature because yeah, it's just it's so smart because like especially like being at Mayfair right. where you're selling that and people are just walking around with these things right mm-hmm. and it, it's very like eye catching. So people are gonna see that and they're gonna they're probably gonna go up to the person and ask where did you get that right? Because mm-hmm. normally when the people they think oh the drinks might be from the food court and then it's not it's like in the middle of the mall. Uh, in that location, maybe not too many people can see us. At least some people that try that really love it, always coming back to support us. How many different little businesses were in that Mayfair little uh, pop up thing? Well, oh, almost le- over 10, ten to fifteen. Like and- at at, a, at any given time. Uh, how, how many at the same time? Like on on like a Monday? I how many would 10. there be? Ten, really? Ten, yeah, yeah. Okay. and then especially on the Christmas time, as 15 to 20. Yeah, but okay. we are at the very back of the uh, station. Yeah. If the people doesn't come into the back, they won't see us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was basically just sort of a big open area right. at the, the back part of the mall. Right. I'd gone through there a couple times, but I don't think I saw no, your stuff no, there. No. no, it's just like in a little corner, but every, very back right, of very our back. station. Yeah. Yeah, at that time, it's very difficult to promote the product. Right. But it's good to promote because every time we can just try to... We have more time to talk to the customer, to know the customer. This is why the customer is very loyalty. And some of the customer customers, we know their name. When they come back, we can just call their name. Right. So I guess it's just a matter of sort of getting the word out there that people that loved you at Mayfair, this is where you can come get it now. Yes. Because mm-hmm. I'm sure you had a lot of people that had the, had your product at Mayfair mm-hmm. and they've been like trying, they've been wanting it again. Right. Mm-hmm. And then uh, some of the customers, they just asked us to stay in Mayfair to find the location. I said, oh, we will try, but we're still looking for another location too. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, at Mayfair, we got a really, really great opportunity to giving out our uh, drinks to the people and let them to try it because if we didn't do anything at Mayfair, the pop-up shop, if we just open up the shop and open up the door and let people come in, might not too many people knowing what we are doing. So I'm really glad that we got the opportunity at Mayfair. The people comes up, then we have the opportunity to talk to them, introduce what the product looks like, what the taste looks like. It's just giving more opportunity to approach to different people. Yeah, I think this place is very special. Right. It's really, really special. Yeah, it is. I I want to ask you, what has been um, sort of the biggest lesson that you've learned so far with owning the business? The only the business I think is promotion part. We need to talk a lot. 
the customer service is our priority. So you mostly mostly the first time customer, we spend a lot of time to introduce our product, introduce our culture, introduce the shop for them. We just spend a lot of time focusing on the customer service. Right. So how do you how do you introduce the culture part? Culture part. What do you mean the culture part? Well, you were saying that you educate people sort of on the culture. Mm. And so, so what does that uh, what does that mean? Okay, yeah. So we will uh, introduce what's the differences of the tea from uh, Asian style and between like England style because England style is more like bread tea. So basically, what you're talking about at the start of the, of the podcast. Yeah, here. the podcast okay. thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's sort of been the biggest lesson is. Yes, just uh, try to talk a lot, and the promotion is a little bit difficult at the beginning because yeah. at the pop art shop, we try at the first day, probably I would say it's very worse because we didn't sell a lot. We actually we didn't sell at all at the first week. We just you sold nothing. No, nothing. We oh, just no. giving out to the people who is around the area, and then starting to let people to try it out because. At, before that, when you see our uh, packaging, you see our drinks, you feel, oh, this is so different, but you never try it, right? Mm-hmm. So you take time to let people to understand what is the ingredient of the drink and what is the culture thing different of the tea. Okay. So it takes a lot of time. As I said that, the most biggest part of the challenge, you have to talk to people. Even if you talk to people, you might not sell anything. Yeah. yeah. So the, the first week there where you sold nothing, was that was that on purpose or did no one just were you just giving stuff out on purpose or like was nobody just buying nothing? Nobody, nobody buying. buying. Oh, okay. Yeah. So nobody comes up and nobody interesting to buy at the and first you at the, beginning. The back of the space. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I would just feel, oh, okay. Uh maybe we need to do something. We have that feeling. And then uh we just like to maybe it's better to giving out some of the people they can start to try it out. Even mm-hmm. though we say but they never try it in this way was the tea right yeah so that was the first purpose we just doing as a complimentary at the first beginning mm-hmm. yeah but yeah. it was the biggest challenge i would say in the life yeah because i actually i feel i'm a shy person and i don't feel i'm always go out to talk to people but in the pop-up shop it's only me and i say and one of my another friend helping us to back up some time but mostly it's us to doing there and i was the one in the from all the time and he was at the bed to preparing so i need to go out to talk to people yeah so in that way i just learned a lot i need to talk yeah mm-hmm. no matter what i need to talk to people yeah so did you did you what did you get out from doing that then like how did for, through talking to so many people, what was what was the outcome for you from doing that? Uh, at the first beginning, I feel it's it's hard. Yeah. And then the more I talk, the more I feel confident. And then also from my uh the other job, um, it's also teaching me a lot how to talk with the people in a different way, and also focusing on the customer service as well. So I use those skill to apply into the business. At the first beginning, I feel it it works. And then um, that can help me to grow with my uh, capability and my confidence to talk to people. I love it. Yeah. Because like when I came in on the weekend, when we came in, it was definite like the hospitality that you showed and the warmth mm. right. that really came through. Yeah. Yeah, it really did. Really? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my uh, first major was the hospitality. So I did learn, but I did not apply in my life until we actually got into the pop-up shop, until we actually got into this business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I I think what you're doing here is, like I've said, it's it's very special. Right. Like everyone everyone needs to come down here and try just, I mean, work your way through the menu Mm -hmm. or or just come down and talk to you two and sort of figure out where the starting point should be for that person Mm -hmm. and come try it. And and there's something here for everyone. Right. just... You when you do come in, you're gonna find something you've never had before, mm-hmm. and and just be prepared to have a potentially strong reaction because you might have like your mind blown, right? Like yeah. I had on the weekend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, no, I I I want to thank you for the time. This has been absolutely awesome. Um, I I just I love what you're doing here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for inviting us. Oh no, thank you for the time. And so, if people are looking for more on on what you're doing here, where should they go? 
Uh, you will be in the six six seven fourth street. So where we we are next to the TD. So basically, when you go to the pediatry or the RBC, yeah, you will pass by. And what our, about online? Online, you can just look at our Instagram. You will call Forest Beauties. We have a lot of picture and the promotion in our Instagram. Just follow us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's called Forest Beauty, and then in the future, we are going to have our website preparing for the people to explore more on our business. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And we will also have the TikTok channel and the YouTube channel in the future. Oh, you're gonna do TikTok? Yes, we, we already, already done. done really? So you're gonna yeah. do have some dancing to some music. And- uh, not, not really. really. Well, not- no, no, but like dancing while you're preparing some drinks. Uh, you can check it out because we already upload some of the video, even oh, okay. though it's not that popular. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's just like starting teaching people how to drink it in a pouch. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you again. This has been awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. And uh, if anybody's looking for what I'm doing, you can go to Vic Food Guys on Instagram. And I guess it's been another episode of Vic or episode of Vic Food Stories. I'll be back next Tuesday. Uh, give a like, uh, subscribe, comment, do all that kind of stuff if you can, please. And yeah, I'll be back next week. So I'll see you. Bye. All right. See ya. Thank you.